Here we are, the final game in this epic trilogy and there's still a long way to go. I would highly recommend you check out the first two videos as I reference them quite a bit. With Halo Infinite hopefully releasing this year, here is a PlayStation fanboy on Halo 3. Released in 2007 on the Xbox 360, Halo 3 took the world by storm grossing over $170 million on its first day. That's mind blowing. To put that into perspective, Microsoft take in a bit more than that every month from Game Pass nowadays. With my spending habits that would fund my gaming addiction for like, at least a few years. The game received 94 out of 100 on Metacritic making it one of the most critically acclaimed games to this day and spoiler alert, it deserved every bit of it. We've destroyed two Halo rings, stopped the religious rising, killed and teamed up with the Covenant and met the great Mighty Pooh. But a few questions remain. Where's Cortana and how in God's name are we going to destroy the Flood? It baffles me that Master Chief is still alive, but somehow the UNSC managed to track him down and give him a helping hand. This is where it begins, immediately you take control of Master Chief and the game never lets up from there. The first level is amazing. Running through the jungle killing the Covenant as they tried to intercept you was so fun. From the first three games, the best levels are the jungly slash mountain levels, and I think this level is on par with the secret cartographer from Halo 1. Even though this is the newest in the trilogy, the game is practically a retro game at this point. You can never take away from the fantastic art design of the Halo series, and I think it's at its best in Halo 3. Dual wielding weapons feels as good as ever, and we're introduced to one of my favourite weapons in the series, the Brute Spiker. This gun seems to rip through enemies while dual wielding. I think Halo 3 is the pinnacle of the series in every way, and while we're on the topic of weapons, the new additions here are phenomenal. One new addition that I loved was the Mauler. In the previous two games, the shotgun was one of my favourite weapons, but do you know what's even cooler? Dual wielding shotguns. Nothing could stand in my way when I had these yokes in my hand. The only issue was that they were introduced near the end, and I didn't get much chance to use them. Now just like Halo 2, I saved the best for last. And yes, it's the Brute Hammer. Bungie proved they knew how to make amazing melee weapons with the energy sword, and feck me that they blow it out of the water with this one. Just look at how you can smash up some of these crawly flood with it. Like I said in the Halo 2 video, I just wish I had the chance to use it in a multiplayer. The pacing of Halo 3 is impeccable. From the start you get the sense of urgency that this is it. The story is epic and that's the only word for it. Either we stop the Covenant from activating the Ark or die trying. The religious fanaticism of the Covenant reaches its peak in this story, every single mission is just non-stop action and I finished the game in two sittings because of it. The story is delivered in these in-game cutscenes that haven't aged too well. In Halo 2 they opted to rematch the cutscenes, but here they didn't and I'd be lying if I said it wasn't Jerry. Honestly it took me a while to realise who this female character was. Commander Key's in-game model looks absolutely nothing like her CG counterpart in Halo 2. Now this is only an issue with the remasters and wouldn't have been a problem at the time of release. The biggest problem with this game is the over-reliance on vehicles. Loads of levels seems like you're driving for ages past groups of enemies that pose little to no real threat. Now they're not as bad as the previous two's vehicle levels, the Warthog feels tight to drive and there are a few levels that have objectives other than drive from point A to B. Bungie added in a few more vehicles which was nice to see, and I enjoyed driving around on the quad bike. Zooming around while taking out these big spider majiggers was cool and it's the best use of vehicles I've seen in the series. While they've been improved, it still hurt the otherwise great pacing of the game. One thing that the game categorically improves upon is the sponginess of enemies. Gone are the days of Steven Hillenburg broods and overemphasis on explosive weapons. Even in the end game, I never felt like I had to put 7 clips into a brute to finish them off. I don't understand how it took them 3 games to figure it out, but finally they did it. Remember how I said in the last video that the hive are terrifying, now that I know they are an intelligent being? Well, they just got even scarier. Near the end, you team up with the hive to defeat the covenant, and that part was feckin' cool. There's something really interesting when you team up with the enemy you've been fighting for so long. The reason why I say they're even scarier now, is because of how they feck you over. They're on your side, but once you outlive your usefulness to them, they turn on you. The final mission where you revisit all locations from Halo 1 is so epic. And of course Wheatley or Ghosts or, no wait wait, I mean 343 Guilty Spark is there to stop you. This leads to the moment. Cortana is saved, but does Master Chief survive? There's a memorial service for all the fallen soldiers and carved into the stone is 117. Now I'd be lying if I said I didn't tear up here. I don't know if it was the journey I was taking on or hearing Sergeant Major's final words in the last showdown. But Chief was dead. He always won and here he succeeded, but at the cost of his life. I've been reading the fall of Reed so I'm really attached to the character, and this got to me. Luckily the game pulled a fast one. Chief is still alive and him and Cortana are still together. And this was the moment that the game was lacking. Cortana was only around in these weird flashback scenes, but this was a great end to an even greater trilogy of games. It's finished.
I'll drop a beacon, but it'll be a while before anyone finds us. Years, even. I'll miss you. Wake me. When you need me. I'm so happy I bought an Xbox to experience this amazing trilogy. I can see the hype and why Halo drove the Xbox for so long. Now, I think I heard the series takes a dip from here on out, but I'll finish it before Infinite comes out. As for now, I'm moving on to the next biggest franchise in Microsoft's arsenal, and that is Gears of War. Thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you all on the next video.